Hey everybody, this is Doug Mark, president of Learning Zen, and I am here for our show called Five Franchising Questions with my lovely guest, Miss Karen Wenning. She is a CFE. She's also the business development manager, aka the Rainmaker. I think that that is going to be. We we wanted a little add a little to your title, as you said. You know, we are in marketing after all. So, um, but Karen, could you tell us about yourself? and Subtle Strauss and how you kind of support the franchising community. Yes, I can do that, Doug. Thanks so much for having me. Um, I have been working with franchisors for 14 years here at Subtle Strauss. And what we do is we provide brand portals. And brand portals allow us to take all of the marketing channels from the franchisor. We, we take their InDesign files. We template those and we put them in a portal that allows the franchisee to come in and customize and personalize for their local market. They do that without deviating from the brand standards. And it's not just for print, even though we do all the print in-house here. So they can order promo and apparel, they can customize for social media and download those uh, customized pieces and upload them to their social media channels. And they can do the same with digital ads. Well, I think that gives everybody a, a clear understanding of what you all do. Uh I was really lucky because you actually showed me your system and I was pretty wowed because, you know, we're in the software development space. And when I think about like usability and new users coming in to, to really learn and understand how to use a platform, in your case, this marketing platform, I was really impressed by the usability of it, but also like the, I would say the, the sort of finite capabilities of being able to kind of draw an area map and then filter out for certain criteria. All right, I'm going to ask you to just kind of, will you just real quickly tell us a little bit about the platform and how it allows you to kind of filter out for certain criteria that match what your marketing criteria is? Sure, yeah, thanks. Um, if there, so you're specifically talking about the direct mail component. So yeah. we are a huge direct mailer at Subtle Strauss here. And what they can do is if they know what their persona looks like, so they know the demographics of that persona, they can come in within the tool and choose those Specific. So if we're looking for, you know, women in the homes uh, ages 25 to 35 who have children under the age of 10, they can choose these specific demographics and they're only in a household income of 125,000 plus. Um, there's all kinds of criteria they can choose from. It's only going to deliver people on that list that meet that criteria and they have to meet it in three ways or more. So we know that we're getting a very accurate mailing list. And when you're using that in conjunction with, you know, like a connected mail product and taking an omni-channel approach, it it can deliver huge return on investment. Yeah, I, I was impressed with like how granular you could get. If you, I mean, you can start off with this massive audience and then as you're adding the filters, you're kind of seeing that, you know, number kind of go down a little bit and you're saying, okay, is this the right number that I'm looking for? Let's start this campaign. So I was also impressed by the usability of it. Um, it's something that we talk about in, you know, Learning Zen all the time is that, you know, when users come in for the first time, you know, if it's really difficult, you're not going to get the adoption that you hope for. And I think you've built a system that I think allows and empowers, you know, franchisees to not have to go through a ton of training to learn how to use something. So kudos to your development team as well. Yeah, thank you. I, I agree that they did an amazing job. Um, I think that having that voice of customer is really what has helped us kind of get there. So really listening to what our franchise customers wanted and needed and how simple it truly had to be, but yet it has to be simple, but it has to be, have really complex customization because yeah. not every area of the country is, the, the images, for example, may not apply to different areas of the country or the bullet points. Like it's may, maybe more important to say one thing in Wisconsin than it is to say in California, which is a totally different atmosphere depending on what your franchise is. You got a little uh, shout out to Wisconsin in there. That was well done. <laughs> Go Badgers, right? Um, all right, so I know you've got a background in franchising, you've got a degree in marketing, and you work with all of these wonderful brands. What's your personal favorite sort of piece of marketing that you love the most, I guess? Oh, that's a good question. I like to really dig into 
how all of these channels are working together, right? So what I do, let's face it, it's very traditional, right? Mostly it's traditional, but to be able to look at how all of the different channels are working together and yeah. to be able to see and measure the results of how you know a direct mail campaign, for example, is still very much for awareness, but to be able to take that direct mail campaign and use it in conjunction with uh, your social media and your digital, and then be able to look at those results and see how many more touches that you're getting yeah. is super powerful to me. I love to see how all of these different channels can work together. So when I started, there were five channels, right? You had uh, radio, TV, direct mail, um, and I, I don't know, you know, like there was, it was so limited and now there's yeah. so many more things that you can do. And we know that the more channels you're in, the more your return on investment is and the better your marketing performs. So that's, what's really cool for me to be able to see. hundred percent agree. Um, this was a bit of a sort of tough lesson, I feel like, for learning Zen when we started off. Um, like, we, if we had probably put more time and effort into our marketing, and I think it would have been an easier road from a growth perspective, as well as an awareness campaign. And so now we've gotten to the point where we really understand that we've got to be using all of these different channels together. And it's been quite a learning experience for us. So I, I honestly just wish I had started doing it earlier. So that was really a, an awesome answer for our audience in particular. Um, I know you just recently posted about Springboard, and that's a conference that we were at last year and, and spoke at as well. Um, and it's a show I really adore, but, you know, haven't been going to traditionally. Just real quickly, what, what do you love about going to Springboard? Oh, Springboard is probably my favorite. Um, I, I don't know. I just got back from Franchise Consumer Marketing uh, Conference, or I'm sorry, Franchise consumer experience conference in Atlanta and that was yeah. amazing yeah but springboard is one of my favorites because um the people that come right so you have you have micro emerging franchisors and then yeah. you have you know emerging franchisors but then you have these established franchisors that come because they just want to help everyone they and do. it's so cool to see that and it's so cool to see these micro emerging brands like sitting at a table and learning from the other guy who maybe only has two more units and learning from the other guy. But then you bring in some of these experts that are teaching them about, you know, why it's important to have a brand, why it's important to take a brand fund, why it's important to, you know, do all of these things. It's like, they just want to help people from making all the mistakes that they did. And it's just right. like you talking yeah. about the marketing. Like <laughs> when I meet people and they ask me, you know, oh, what do you think? Of, how do you, how do I get into franchising as a supplier? It's like, well, I don't, I don't know for sure, but let me tell you all the mistakes I made. <laughs> right. Right. I, it, it's amazing how like helpful and collaborative it, you know, everyone is at that show. And it's in franchising is in general, but I feel like, it kind of takes a few years of going to IFA to be recognized and kind of grow your network inside of it. And I felt like after one year of going to Springboard, I got what well, took me five years in IFA. So not a knock at IFA. I love that show. Always going to go like adore it. But Springboard was different. And it was, it was something that we were so glad that we got to that show. I will go to it forever now. And it, yeah, and so I'm the same way as you. Like, I just love all the collaboration going on at that show. Yeah, I, I, everyone's just so welcoming, right? Because they know that so many people are are new that haven't done the whole, you know, conference thing before. And Lane and Brad, like, they have a way of bringing the fun, they do. like, beyond. Like, they, they, they know how to do fun. They do. So it, it's just, it, it's just really, really good all around. Can't yeah, say yeah, enough yeah. good things about Springboard. That, that opening video last year um, when um, Lane was in the car that was bouncing. It, yeah, it was, those two are absolutely hilarious. Lane and Brad, they've both been on the show as well. So um, good good shout out to them and to Springboard. We love your show. Keep doing it. We know there's a ton of fun at it. Thank you. Um, and it's a 10-year anniversary. It is. Yeah, what a great year to go. And it's in Philly. Philly is an awesome city, like totally gets forgotten. I feel like when we talk about the trade show circuit, but Philly has awesome restaurants, really cool places to go out, diehard sports fans. Um, there's a lot to like about Philly. It's a pretty fun town. So uh, yeah, shout out to, to having a show in Philly to Lane and the guys. 
Um, all right, let's let's um let's delve into the future for a second. We're gonna say it's it's ten years from now, and Karen Renning is the president of IFA. Where would we hold our annual conference? Where in the United States would we hold our annual conference? Any place but Vegas. Any place but Vegas. That totally works. And not an answer I've ever had, so I love it. Vegas is just not my place, but um, I, I like to go new places. So any place new and different, someplace we haven't had it before, that's where we would be having it. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I hadn't been to San Diego for a work conference and so I really loved that location uh, for a conference. I think it did a, they did an amazing job. It was so nice to get in front of people again. But I, I loved that location. So I'm right there with you. Um, I, I've had a lot of really fun answers on that. But anything but Vegas may, may take the cake right there. Um, Karen, it was amazing having you on the show. Really appreciate it. How, do, how does our audience get in touch with you? What's the best way for them to reach out to you? Can you share kind of your social presence and your website? Oh, sure. You can easily find me on LinkedIn, Karen uh, Wenning, W-E-N-N-I-N-G. Uh, that's where I spend a lot of time. Um, but, you know, you can also reach me at karen.wenning at subtle-strauss, S-T-R-A-U-S dot com. Thank you so much for coming on, Karen. We truly appreciate it. Thank you all for watching. Please make sure to subscribe and follow Learning Zen on YouTube, as well as all of the social media channels. We're going to be hopefully launching the Fast Five uh, on our TikTok channel, which is going to be an exciting change to that channel and more content. So stay tuned. Thank you so much, Karen and everyone. Cheers. Ciao for now.